Hey everyone, my name is Sam Corris and I direct research for our Autonomous Technology and Robotics section. Today we're diving into robotics and I do want to thank Daniel McGuire, the associate on our team, because he put a, a lot of good work into this research. And so with robotics we're entering a very interesting phase with all of the advancements in artificial intelligence and so we're seeing an incredible convergence between AI and the hardware of robotics. And, you know, I think Elon has said this, and at the end state, it's easy to imagine a totally transformed economy, because if you can have a robot that does what a human does 100%, then you've really unlocked the economy, right? Because you have productivity per capita times capita, and if you replace humans as the capita and you can manufacture robots, that's a unconstrained economy uh, but that's not where we are and you know we have to explore kind of this transition phase and how do we get there and what does it look like and the opportunities along the way and so that's what we're going to be doing today and we think that even kind of in this medium term time horizon there's an opportunity for generalizable robotics uh, that provides an opportunity for 24 trillion dollars in revenue annually so that's a, a pretty big number, uh, and we'll show you how we get there. To start off, um, I think it's useful to kind of just to look at this and see the landscape of where robots are operating today. And I think these two axes are pretty important for understanding the growth and progress in where there's an opportunity for automation. And so that's going from expensive to inexpensive, uh, and from structured to unstructured environments. And most automation today happens in structured environments, um, but us humans, we operate in an unstructured world. And so, you know, that's really where you have this insane opportunity is in these low cost robotics that can operate in unconstrained environments. And we think that's kind of why so many people are going after this humanoid robot. And I think, you know, when we say humanoid, uh, it's useful to think of that just as a synonym for generalizable. And so, you know, as I just mentioned, uh, lower prices are stimulating demand for industrial robots. And uh, industrial robots have been dropping 50% uh, for every cumulative doubling in production. And so I think we're at a point now where the hardware costs are low enough um, and continuing to flow that way as money flows in and people are uh, designing for different types of robotics. And we're really constrained by the performance and software side of things. And so that's the second thing that we need to look at. Uh, increased performance is critical as well to driving adoption. Right? It doesn't matter if you have an extremely cheap robot or automation solution if it can't do what you want. And so I think you know, this only goes up to 2022, and we've certainly had a handful of breakthroughs in AI since then. But just in the years from 2015 to 2022, uh, robot performance improved 33-fold over those seven years. And this is looking at items picked and placed per hour, so grabbing something out of a bin, placing it somewhere else. Uh, and you can see that human performance is roughly 400 items per hour. Uh, and now there are robots out there that can pick a thousand items per hour. The other important thing uh, is that it's already better than humans and it's unclear where the constraint is. So people often compare automation relative to human performance, um, but I think the reality is with automation, you can far exceed what humans can do. Another element that we're tracking, and this is uh, somewhat going away from the humanoid robot, although humanoid robots certainly will be collaborative, is looking at collaborative industrial robots. And so uh, some people, if you think of a traditional industrial robot, you think of auto manufacturing and a big robot arm behind a cage. Uh, these are robots that can work side by side with humans. They are typically far easier to retrain. Um, and when we look at adoption curves, we always say that 10 to 20 percent adoption is the sweet, per, sweet part of the S-curve. And if we look here, we can see that uh, unit sales of collaborative robots as a percent of total industrial robots 
has increased from you know, close to 3% in 2017 to now getting to that sweet spot, 10% in uh, 2022. So we have robots that are becoming far more performant. They're coming down in costs. What does that mean? Well, it means that many companies are likely to deploy more robots than humans. And so you can look here. Um, this is Amazon, number of robots and employees. And you can see that between 2022 and 2023, they certainly added more robots than employees. Uh, and I think the other important thing here is that the robots are not taking away jobs, right? As you add robots and you lower costs, you improve efficiencies. Uh, that tends to create demand. And unless you can really have a robot that's doing 100% of the tasks, everything we've seen is that as you introduce automation, you actually typically increase the number of jobs there are. And as I was saying, it's not that robots are replacing humans. They're actually making them far more productive and not just creating jobs at that specific company, but they're creating whole new industries. And so if we look historically here, this is automation's impact on productivity, and it's really created these industries as well. So if we look at the time to do laundry uh, before and after the washing machine, the time went from roughly 15 hours down to two hours. So an 87% decrease in the amount of time. And you know, before washing machines, it wasn't as though people were spending half the day washing clothes and the other half you know, doing something else. Um, it's that they were washing clothes maybe once every month or once every few months. But as it became possible to wash clothes every two days, it created a whole new industry. It created the washing and drying industry. Uh, and it's changed the way that people behave, and it's created different types of clothing that are designed to be washed. So it really transformed everything about it. Same thing if we look at the time to manufacture a car before the assembly line and after the assembly line, a very similar uh, decrease in the amount of time. And it created the auto industry and kind of what we know today as modern manufacturing. Uh, similarly, you know, if we look at rolling robots, and this is an Amazon example, the time from clicking to shipping an item out of the warehouse decreased roughly 80% before and after the use of these Kiva rolling robotics. And now we've got uh, two-day delivery, same-day delivery, uh, a whole different shift to e-commerce because of this convenience. And so if we're going to size the market, we kind of look at this uh, ability to create new industries and the productivity gains we can have. And so I'm going to break down for you how we get to this $24 trillion annual opportunity globally. Uh, this is just breaking it down between household robotics and manufacturing robotics. And so for manufacturing, what I'll do is you know, we look at global manufacturing GDP at $28.5 trillion in roughly 2030. And we just saw those you know, roughly 80% uh, productivity improvements from automation. Uh, and so if we go into that range, and then we say, OK, if they're increasing productivity by this much, uh, what is the take rate that the automation provider could take for revenue? And so if we look at these green boxes, that averages to roughly $12 trillion in revenue uh, per year. And then if we look at the household side of things, we say, OK, what is the amount of unpaid work per day? And that's roughly 2.3 2 hours per day. You can think of that as cooking, cleaning, um, you know, doing various tasks around the house that no one's paying you to do, but you're still doing them. Uh, by the working age population, so 2.8 billion people, multiplied by the weighted average hourly wage, which is quite low globally, but uh, $10.75. And we're saying that people value their free time at roughly half of their paid time. And this gets to the other half of it, the other $12.5 trillion opportunity. And so this is a, a big opportunity that exists out there. Um, 
you know, we're continuing to do modeling because, as I said, the end state, you can see how quickly this becomes a huge opportunity. And the interesting thing is tracking the progress to say, you know, how many of these tasks can the, you know, AI do, the smart generalizable robot do, and what does that mean for the market? So if you have more questions, I know there's rapid development on humanoid robots, on robotics in general. Uh, we're continuously, continuously publishing stuff online. Feel free to you know, send us messages on X, uh, and we'd, we'd love to discuss and debate.